my name is Joseph Peacock and I play Donny Osmond. And the Osmonds, the musical is about the story of the Osmonds family and how they rose to fame and how they got to the place where they sold 100 million records and kind of what it cost, um, what it cost them as a family, what it took. Um, we see it start right from the start of the Andy Williams show um, when they were just children right the way through to their first big hit in One Bad Apple, straight through to the Donnie and Marie show and then obviously the catastrophic bit at the end. When they, I'm not going to tell you the end. But <laughs> yes, yes. It, it ends on their 50th annual anniversary. So, yeah. Yeah, and obviously the Osmonds are kind of hugely well known, but what kind of attracted you to the show? I think... So in the audition, we got to sing, obviously, some of the songs. And in any normal musical, you don't get to sing rock songs like this and yeah. belt out like that. So I think a lot of it was to do with the music because the music is timeless and brilliant. Um, and obviously, when I was, there was the opportunity to play Donny Osmond. I don't think there's many people that are going to turn that down to play such an icon. So, yeah, it's kind of... Yeah, and as you, as you touch on playing Donny, kind of it comes obviously with a certain pressure, I suppose, and expectation. Do you kind of, how do you kind of balance that? It's a, it's a really hard thing. Um, I didn't really think that there would be a lot of pressure because I think in our generation, like we know who Donny Osmond is, but we don't really know like the type of. We weren't living through his stardom. Yeah, you know, he was probably like the first Justin Bieber. Do you know what I mean? That kind of mega, mega star, and. I didn't really feel the pressure until the first preview in Leicester yeah. when I started seeing Puppy Love and the amount of women that just went yeah. was like, it was quite overwhelming. And I think it did, it hasn't changed in however many shows we've done. Do you know what I mean? Every single show is there is women going mad thinking that I am <laughs> possibly as close to, as they're ever going to get to Donny Osmond. But yeah. you know, for that split second, I am him. So there is a massive pressure and, I think because the fans know him so well and have grown up with him, they are they have a certain level of protection against these this family, and so yeah, it is quite a pressure, but not not nothing that I can't handle. <laughs> well, obviously, I know the scripts there to obviously help you, but what kind of research did you do yourself? Kind of, did you have to go and watch videos on Donny and all that? Oh yes, <laughs> again, because their performances are so iconic. Yeah. And I think, obviously, I did a lot of inner research on Donny. I read his book. And obviously, we had Jay there for a lot of the process. So they've only just left. But um, we had Jay on hand from the beginning. And he was very, very giving with his time. And he sat us five boys down and spoke to us for about 45 minutes each and we could ask anything so I asked him so many questions about Donny and he was so caring just went this 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 is what I think this is what I think and I took so much um, but there's obviously uh, there's only so oh, so far you can go when you're portraying a, a living human being and I think there's a line between you know acting and then just doing an impersonation and I think there's a there's a little bit of give there, but I think one thing I have really, really taken is um, the way he holds his microphone. Yeah, I noticed it in most of the videos, and I was like, that is something that I can take, and that is Donny Osmond bit, you know, Joseph Peacock's version of Johnny Osmond. So, yeah, but yeah, and obviously, as you say, kind of J Osmond's kind of is his story that's in the musical. There were obviously some jukebox musicals you don't get that, whereas the people are actually involved. How was that kind of process? And did that kind of help you guys? in preparing the show yeah it was it was huge and again as you say that doesn't that doesn't happen yeah. um, to have the man that lived this with you explaining these stories to you like it's so it's even crazy now because we're so close to Jay and Karen um, and the fact that I, we were sitting in I think we were sitting in Bill's in one of the one of the places and I was literally just sat next to him like you were friends with Elvis yeah his mom was friends with Elvis like it's ridiculous yeah. um but he was so so lovely and you could see that he was putting his heart into this and as you said this is from his eyes this is not from any of the other brothers this is 
Jay's story from Jay's eyes. And so it's his heart project. You know what I mean? This was his life. And any normal person wouldn't go through a hundredth of what they went through on a daily, daily basis. Um, right from when they were kids, you know, this was their whole life. And now they're like 70 and they can kind of look back on it. And this is every time like he's, he watched the show every single time and he'd just sit there and just cry. Cause like what they did as a family was so special and utterly ridiculous because it is so far out of any of our reaches and, you know, to sell a hundred million records in that generation yeah. is insane to, to sell a hundred million records now, but with internet, YouTube, Spotify, you know, all of this, it's a lot easier. And they did it with, without any of that. So just shows how massive they really were. Yeah. And obviously, as you kind of touched on already, the kind of the Osmonds fans are kind of massive, but how is it also then to play to a younger generation, kind of a new audience? How's that been for you? Yeah, it has been really good. And we've had, again, like pretty even um, people come and see it. And it's really nice to come and like open, see that curtain fly up and have the younger generation there. And again, the thing that like, when they talk at stage door, the thing that gets them is the music. Yeah. And I think that's just, that's just crazy that they, that music that they've written years ago is still, still connecting to younger generations. And I just, I wish that, you know, more people and more uh, young people can come see the show and listen to the music and connect with this story. Um, but again, for, for the fans, it's, it's so, so special. Um, every single night there's people crying at the end of that one. And, you know, I've never been a part of a show that we had four standing ovations throughout the show. And that just doesn't, yeah. just doesn't happen, you know. And the love that these people have for this band and the family, you can feel it when you're on stage. And it's just, it's amazing. And obviously, as you've already touched on again, that you get the kind of poppy love to sing, that kind of big number. But do you have a favourite number in the show generally? I think, so my favourite to sing, obviously, is probably Puppy Love, because that's the moment when it's like full Donny Osmond. Yeah. Um, but I think my, my favourite song in the show, and I'm not even in it, is a song called Hold Her Tight. But um, in the show, the four brothers sing when they're in the studio. And it's kind of when, you know, the story arc is going a little bit south. Um, but it's a really, really special moment between the four lads when we see like an amount of play they see them play and get kind of taken away from them. And it's really, really beautiful. Um, so I think my favourite song in the show is Hold It Tight. And it changes every week. Of course. Of course. <laughs> I have a couple of questions I ask all the people I interview. These are more just generally okay. you. What was the first piece of theatre that you saw in your life that you remember having a big impact on you? Do you know what? I think... I think the first piece of theatre I, I saw, and it's actually quite a good story, was We Will Rock You when it was at the Dominion. Um, and I remember coming up the stairs in Tottenham Court Road and I was like, just saw that Freddie Mercury sign, just like, boom. Yes. And then, uh, which was obviously really, really special. And then my first ever West End job was also at the Dominion uh, when I was doing Bat Out of Hell. So I think that was a really nice, like, full circle moment. And again, I just, every time I came to work, I came up the stairs and I was like, yeah. that's mad. You know, 13 year old Joseph would be pretty proud, I reckon. And what simply does theatre mean to you? Or, well, I think that, like, to me, it's my life, really. You know, it's the, it's the only thing I've been good at. Yeah. Um, you know, I absolutely love it. I love telling stories, I love telling good stories. Um, I love putting costumes on and pretending to be someone else for three hours because it's good fun. You know what I mean? And I absolutely love it and I hope to be able to do it for a very, very, very long time. Amazing. I hope so too. Uh, my final question though for you today is the easy one. Why should anyone out there come and see The Osborne's Musical? Because it's brilliant. <laughs> if you want to see some good costumes, cracking dancing, some cracking vocals, um, I think it is the story for you. And again, you can relate to this story because everyone has heard an Osmond song at some point in their lives. If you know Boyzone, you know the Osmonds. So I think if you want to come, 
Oh, and I just lost. Okay. Come see an amazing show with cracking, cracking vocals, cracking dancing, a cracking story, and we promise to give you a party. I fully agree. Uh, the Osmond yes. musical is on until the 3rd of December.